Welcome to Movie Feuds, a show my mother at one point called Pretty Good. Today's a bit different as I'm not feuding movies but the critics who review them. I may have missed one or two, but I'm basing this on popularity, sub count, and just what I've seen. If this goes well, maybe we'll do another one down the road. Now I know what one or two of you might be thinking, isn't this a pathetic attempt to gain views and attention from popular YouTubers? Let's get started. The critics on these channels have very different personalities. Some are more straightforward like Chris Stuckman, while others are a bit more over the top like John Flickinger. Perhaps he's that jacked up in real life, but I find it hard to believe. He'd have to have a constant stream of Red Bull and whey protein pumping through his veins 24-7 to maintain that level of intensity. I just don't buy it. Jeremy Johns has great energy and provides some solid jokes. It's easy to see why people keep tuning in to his quick reviews. You can tell Grace puts a lot of work into her show. And she's very informative in her reviews. Arguably too informative if that's a thing. She's to be fair, I sound like I'm doing a good impression of a Daniel Tosh ripoff. So, we all have our issues. And now that I've criticized the only female on this list, feel free to call me sexist because internet. Doug Walker as Nostalgia Critic is fantastic. He's a character of over-the-top reviewers and he nails it. Comedy is also a staple of the schmoes who comfortably exchange quips back and forth in their quick movie reviews. They also have a solid set of podcasts for longer sessions and they quite frequently get great guest hosts on. Last but certainly not least is Jonathan Paula who goes for a more professional route in his reviews, donning a suit and tie with the traditional theater motif. Although recently I noticed he has ditched some of the fancier digs for a more stripped down wardrobe. I expect by his 10th season he'll just be fully naked. That's what we're ending this segment on? Fully naked? Okay. The bread and butter of a good review show is the review itself. Jeremy has a great setup for YouTube, that's for sure. His show is fast, friendly, and funny. The three F's of YouTube. That's not a thing. He's more of an entertainer though and less of an insightful critic. I can watch pretty much any review by Jeremy and I'm gonna get basically the same experience every single time. Not a bad experience, just nothing very insightful. I'm guessing he's pretty unscripted on the show, if not 100% entirely, and while this can lead to some really funny lines, it also hinders the execution. For instance, play a drinking game on any episode of his show where anytime he utters the word movie, you take a shot. You'll be drunk off your ass within three minutes. And that's, yes, I know that's a small little nitpick, but that's really all I have. Grace, 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 Grace Randolph. What do I say? Here's the deal. She's on this list because she's very popular. She has over 436,000 subscribers. She works hard at what she does, and it appears she attempts to entertain. On the other hand, it's also clear that she's more about quantity than she is about quality. YouTube is a really crappy game of being first to market. Early bird catches the worm sort of a thing. Chris Stuckman is another reviewer that seems keen on getting his reviews out the door as soon as physically possible. I've seen him post videos at 4 a.m. on multiple occasions. And you might be saying to me, Adam, he's just using the YouTube scheduler to go out at that time. What? Why? Why would he go out at 4 a.m.? That makes no sense. And yes, that's a very ironic thing for me to criticize him for as I have no schedule or consistency either. But I don't do this full time. If I did, I would make sure that I had episodes of A, B, and C going out at certain times on certain days. It just makes things much easier. His reviews are very well thought out, well spoken, and he clearly is a movie buff. His rant on Die Hard 5 alone made me a fan. That movie is the worst! Now if you came on this video thinking I was just gonna suck up to your favorite YouTubers, <laughs> think again. I have an opinion. I'm going to share it. I like to be honest and give valuable feedback. I do think all these are great people from what I know, which is very little. And I think they all have a passion and they put time into their shows. But that doesn't mean that they're perfect. Just like the movies they're reviewing, there is hiccups. And I think it's fair to critique on that. I could also bash my own show. I could go eight mile on your ass. I could white rabbit this situation. Talk about how I'm so sarcastic sometimes. I don't even know if I'm being genuine or just being a total douche. Uh, I have a crappy audio setup. It's a $20 hookup that goes to my phone. I talk really fast sometimes and talk too much and ramble on like I'm doing right now. I can say plenty else, but the thing is, I am my own worst critic. I know what needs to be done and fixed. I don't have a budget, and like I said, this is just a hobby for me. But I'm not the focus here, so let's move on to more important people. Now please keep in mind what I just said, because I'm turning to the flick pick man himself, John Flickinger. He's just not for me, and that's fine. I'm not the target audience. He has plenty of loyal fans out there, and he's good at what he does. 
He's just so damn extreme though. I can't handle it. I can't keep up with what he's saying. If a monster energy drink were somehow converted to a human form, much like the Vision in Avengers 2, it would be John Flickinger. He knows this stuff though from the little bits of review I could digest and his production quality is very nice. Speaking of nice production quality, which I'll dive further into the final round, we have Jonathan Paula. He has a variety of different shows on his channel, but since this is all about movies today, we're going to go with his flagship, Movie Night. His reviews are very polished, insightful, and well scripted and typically have a fun introduction where he places himself in a key sequence of a film he's reviewing. Red Letter Media has a few different shows as well, but half in the bag is what I'm focusing on. Although if you haven't seen the Plinkett reviews on the Star Wars prequels, you absolutely must. They run almost as long as the prequels themselves, but they're far more entertaining. Half in the Bag has a very self-aware, self-deprecating approach. Their insights are very well stated and always contain a nice amount of skepticism. The side stories can get a bit long in the tooth at points, but it's always entertaining. And since I brought up side stories, let's go to Nostalgia Critic. This is perhaps a bit unfair of an inclusion since he typically just blasts shitty movies, but he has different shows that definitely cover all forms of film, so I'm going to allow it. Your Movies Suck and Cinema Sins also do a great job blasting crap films, but we don't have enough time today. Like I said, maybe we'll do another one of these down the road and we can include them in that. The Nostalgia Critic at one time was my favorite content creator, but he lost me over the years when he walked away from the show and came back a couple months later with a new crew at his side. Regardless on my thoughts lately and the direction he's taken, he has still given me hours upon hours of entertainment and after all he remembers it so we don't have to they are far and away more knowledgeable than their title of schmoes suggests these are not average schmoes these guys know what they're talking about mark was the first to appear in a movie feuds episode and later christian would join me while i might not always agree with their opinions on movies i can certainly appreciate where they're coming from and i like to check in on their channel on occasion give them a comment give the video a like and just watch that sub count climb because you know what they've earned it I'm not sure people think about production value or even really care about it on YouTube, but I do, so this matters to me, and only me. I'm not sure if I've complained about jump cuts yet on this episode, but I certainly have in the past, and while it works very well for Jeremy Johns, I think he's the exception to the rule. It's just a really lazy way to edit, and it screams half-assed, which is crazy considering the only one on this show that claims to be that way is the exact opposite. Half in the Bag has fantastic production. Everything from the lighting, the editing, the sets, the wardrobe, it's all very top of the line. Jonathan Paul is in the same boat. I'm guessing that most people that view his videos think he has a staff supporting him. That's not the case. The quality of the show unfortunately comes as a price as he often doesn't get to review new movies day one or even day 100 for that matter, instead focusing on a well-crafted experience with some older films in the mix. Johns keeps things simple yet effective. I definitely think there's room for improvement as the show seems to have stayed the same for like five or six years, but if it ain't broke, why fix it, I suppose, would be the retort. Stuckman, Flickinger, and the Schmoes all have very similar YouTube setups, single camera, harsh cuts, not much more to it. <laughs> Nostalgia Critic shows come a long way over the years where he started out with a traditional white background just talking to the camera. He now has some hardcore production values going on. This is another passionate cinephile who I hope never stops making episodes. Grace's show is kind of a mixed bag for me. You can tell she puts in a lot of effort. She's got the green screen going on where she projects herself in front of a video. But then there's the ones that are shot directly from her phone where you know she's just trying to get a review out quick before everybody else. In either case, someone's got to be first to get the reviews out so it might as well be her. Real talk for a second. When I wrote the script for this episode, I was hoping it was only going to take me like 10 minutes because after all, this is a subscriber grab clickbait video. That turned out not to be the case, and I found I actually gave a shit about what I was talking about, which is just odd. It's, it's bonkers. Anyway, this is the part where I open the voting and the discussion up to you in the comments. At the end of the year, I do a video announcing the winners to all my Movie Feuds episodes, so I suppose I'll lump this in with that. You can, of course, always stop by the polls page to see the progress, too. Once again, I apologize if I didn't get one of your reviewers on this list. There are many fish in the sea. I didn't cover even a small speck of what's on YouTube. You know what? Honestly, there could be 8, 9, 10 YouTubers that are way better than the people on this list. We just don't know. They haven't been unearthed yet. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Seriously, there could be a great show right in front of you. And you just didn't even, it didn't even dawn on you that this is the show that's amazing and it has potential to be so much better. I don't know what that show is. I'm just saying, it's probably there. You're probably watching it right now.